All right. Well, thank you all for coming. Thank you, Farid, for joining us, for being here, uh, and for your wonderful book. And Lucia Retta, a first-year fiction MFA student, is going to be giving the introduction. So I'll turn things over to Lucia. Thank you, Paul. Um, the first poem I ever read by Farid Matuk was addressed to his daughter, but in reading it, I felt personally addressed as well in ways that were poignant and, and powerful. And his words were straddling the tension between particular and intimate and what is ubiquitous and universal. Um, so I'm going to quote from that poem. It's in his 2018 poetry collection, The, the Real Horse. And if words alone are tracers in the negative, I'll keep writing you to move it welcomed by the outline where you could drop the word. Um, I think that the space is opening here and it's not just physical or on the page, although the structure of the poem does do both of those things but there's space opening in our psyche as well. Um, the poem asks us to reconsider the space that we have been given in this world, the space we have carved out for ourselves, and the space we wish to leave for those who come after us. And I think this is characteristic of his writing, which takes a long view of forever, while also remaining really firmly planted in the urgencies of the now. I think the word, as, as suggested in a lot of his work, can make space for more to come. And his writing invites us to consider what will be more, what is meaningful and why, what keeps us going, what is worth making space for in our lives. He writes often to his daughter, and in reading his work, I think we are asked to think about how to address the next generation. How we think about preserving a story, an inheritance, a sense of self, taking into the future and the past both, um, thinking about joy and ruin together, inheritance, regret, possibility, the poems move us into a space where we can consider how to leave room for what is next, even as we are asked to be in tension with the flaws of the present. Um, the human encounters present in his work display generosity alongside keen inquiry and take us on a journey that explores the terrain of nationhood, migration, selfhood, queerness, gender, race, all in ways that want us to open our mind and, and be imaginative as we consider those topics. He's known not just as a poet and an educator, but also a translator, an editor, an essayist. He was born in Peru to a Syrian mother and Peruvian father. He came to the US as a child, navigated the territories of undocumented person, legal resident, naturalized citizen. He's no stranger to the meeting place between worlds. He currently teaches in the MFA program at the University of Arizona and serves on editorial teams for Fence Magazine and the book series Research on Creative Writing. So it's an honor to welcome a writer whose work so intensely addresses some of the most pressing issues of our current moment. Welcome to Farid Matuk. Thank you, Lucia. It was beautiful, 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 um, and incredibly embarrassing. Um, um, so, thank you, thank you, um, thank you for having me as part of the series. It's such an honor to, um, even though it's virtual, it's such an honor to visit at a program who's produced and housed uh, writers that have meant so much to me, many of whom are on your faculty now. And to work with the students uh, over the week has been, has been really nourishing for me. So thank you. Every conversation I've had with your community has been, um, has been really good for me. So thank you. 
because I know there's a lot of students um, in the group. I wrote you a note, a poetics note about the book. That's very um, shop talky. In a way, I regret not using punctuation because it invited uh, readers to be sort of breathless in running through the phrases and lines. The absence of punctuation can also be an invitation to consider the unit of the phrase within the line. How James Logan Bach and Alice Notley say similar things about a certain kind of line, mid-length, almost always end stopped, free verse. That such a line is its events. And that's a formulation of Alice's. A line is its events. That the play of stresses and sounds internal to the line matter as much or even more than the line's ending. So the way trochees and iams pull words and breath forward and back felt like a sloshing sensation, thinking of that ocean. Maybe an ocean tied to a variable colloquial moon. And that was in the background of making the book, though I couldn't articulate that quite so clearly when I was writing it. I could describe some of the syntax, how a given phrase is written in such a way that it seems to modify the previous and subsequent phrase. So that became a way to describe and to try to realize my aspiration to write a poetry that could give itself over to difference without differentiation. Or a lyric that could actually walk on ahead and away from a single speaking subject by means other than system or collage. But to locate that aspiration in some aspect of colloquial language in the pressure cooker of an intimate address, in this case, an address from a father to a daughter, with all the power differential and risk for harm and potential for care in that intimacy. To test if such stakes could be navigated maybe better when we give up on being singular, integral, self-possessed subjects. And at the time, I could describe this aspiration in terms of the sequence of the sonnet, the way the address or story of one sonnet could spill into the next. But the spilling and sloshing was there at the level of the syllables and stresses too, though again, I couldn't name that then. And less so, there was the influence of Bernadette Mayer, reading Midwinter Day aloud and realizing suddenly that she had stacked six end rhymes and I had not even noticed until they accumulated enough. I then started to notice that she often activated near rhymes between the end rhymes. So those internal rhymes sort of pulled a little on the end rhymes on either side of them and softened everything together into a kind of triangle or zigzag down the poem. And some of that was there, or I tried to activate it in parts of the real horse. I quite like the erotics of that zigzagging feeling and pleasure can be poetics enough. So I'm gonna um, launch into, into the reading. I'm gonna read the last section of the book and um, I'm gonna preface it with some some notes so that we can be in the, in the sequence as a whole. The last section is called No Address. Um, but the first note I wanna share with you is about a 19th century uh, stage theater technology called the panorama. So installed on immense spools, panorama scrolled pavilions, offering continuous scenery as if viewed from a galloping horse a passing boat or a moving train. And my interest in the panorama is that it's akin to today's car commercials where you're offered the fantasy of, of freedom through evacuated space, which is a colonial idea of space. And this is relevant to the, the series I'll be reading because um, in the 1850s, uh, a slave named Henry Brown escaped with collaborators 
that helped him ship himself in a box to, to a, a quote unquote free state. But what he did is that he staged, once he became established in a free state, he um, came up with his own panorama show and he traveled up and down the Eastern seaboard and throughout Europe with the show. And the highlight of the show was that he would emerge from a replica of the box in front of his own panorama that he had painted. And this is really key. He had the panorama painted um, with black bodies that had been tortured and killed and hung. And the panorama was quite thick. And so the convention of seeing empty space and the, and the, the uh, illusion of motion in front of empty space and speed was confounded. And what he was offering was thick space, crowded space, a space that, was, that had nowhere to run to, that was thick with contemporary violence. And yet he's staging his emergence from the box over and over again in front of this thick space. And he's doing it in free states and throughout Europe where slavery is not an active system. And so he's calling into question his own liberation is the way I read that act, right? He got free, but he's emerging over and over again in free spaces that his panorama seems to be suggesting are actually quite loaded. There's nowhere to run to. So the other notes from the series, um, as a volunteer with International Solidarity Movement, Rachel Corey practiced a strategy of creating human shields in which activists place themselves among vulnerable populations, hoping fear of first world state retribution will keep conflicts from escalating into violence. This logic offers bodies with Anglo phenotypes as signs of privileged national status. Other such activist groups include Witness for Peace and Peace Brigades International. Um, the line, the voice said to Duriel, refers to an incident of salvation by intuition that the poet, composer, and performer Duriel Harris shared in a conference talk. The Los Angeles Times reports predator drone operators flying missions in Afghanistan said, we see shadows, etc." The transcripts also include pilots attempts to reconcile interpretations of living targets coming from central command. Part of the 19th century spiritualist movement, spirit dancers were performers who summoned multiple male and female spirits of various ethnicities and races in rapid succession while their bodies were committed to the demands of dance. Embracing the dumb will speak, the lame will walk is a line from Cesar Vallejo's poem, Hymn to the Volunteers of the Republic. Long range acoustic devices transmit sound at up to 149 decibels causing immediate headaches, vertigo, and in some cases, irreversible hearing loss. The active denial system developed by Raytheon projects a focused millimeter wave energy beam that produces intolerable heating sensations on skin. And so both of these technologies are used to control populations, to control uh, mass demonstrations of people without using lethal force. Um, and then lastly, in Henry Box Brown's Mirror of Slavery, which was the name of his panorama show, Brown emerged from the box singing a hymn of thanksgiving. His translation and performance of Psalm 40's Lamentation into a song of near ecstatic pleasure. Hymn of thanksgiving, H-I-M, is a typo in the song's title as reproduced in the British edition of Brown's Narrative of the Life of Henry Box Brown, written by himself. And a lot of um, the research I did, I should say I'm indebted to the work of scholar Daphne Brooks, who wrote a, a fantastic book called um, Bodies in Descent, where she's looking at various 19th century performers of color. 
and wondering about agency. All right. In 1849, collaborators, collaborators helped Henry Brown ship himself out of enslavement by hiding his body in a parcel crate. In 1850, Brown launched his panorama show, Henry Box Brown's Mirror of Slavery, prompting Frederick Douglass to lament, had not Henry Box Brown and his friends attracted slaveholding attention to the manner of his escape, we might have had a thousand Box Browns per annum. In 2003, US citizen Rachel Corey, volunteering with International Solidarity Movement, knelt her white body between the home of Palestinian pharmacist Samir Nasrallah and an Israel Defense Forces armored bulldozer. Despite appeals to US officials in a suit brought by Corey's family in Israeli courts, her death generated no judicial, diplomatic, or policy consequence. If I say Henry only emerged into a value he could trade, do I figure the end of value as Rachel submerged? And where on that crossing have we brought you? Reportless subjects to the quick, continual address, Emily Dickinson. I want you to see the leaves are gone and white like winter. You said, let's make like a girl mean something amazing commercial. Flickered in that dead patch, today is where I saw. The cardinals glow, you wanted to see me go first, to use a pleasure in seeing me. Walk behind this man, the voice said to Duriel so she could leave the train platform alive, unbarred, and unafraid, feeling actual having nothing to do with little moments, the suds in the sink lighting off workmen's calls, or how some of the Buddhist advice bends air before breaking it. Birds tonight and kids playing outside thread air into each other chiastically. It's not a word, the voice said, but a pressure to impose to feel the shape you're in. Tell me what to see when you can. It's a false spring after two days of rain. You splashed in little verbs, if any use us, loud without the figure, like running a voice's grain. Is it a given? Its facts go in boxes we etch with names, each shaving again. Monies and birds settled by night in what formations on the reservoir lake? The roofs replaced leaves, the hail brought down, flake in the sun and winds push and mound them into berms. There is no color in straw, but fuel and nerves. Your leg shakes, and big planters hold trees outside the stately houses around the water. I can make my bad teeth better and hang a little gold at your wrist. Any verb could turn toward a new feeling. Waking glad to remain an owner. If whiteness or a people is a claim to life, you slept through the night in a house that stands and our papers are filed with the state. So vacationing, we can hike up in the mountain to see the ancient pyramid above the valley of Tepotlan, honored a tax collector. Bureaucracies precede us. There's a tribe somewhere, we say, that trades in fear, their name such a stab at beauty. We should assume they study our histories and our lyrics, our gestures and tones. Even if they don't exist, the people's trade is fear, feeling a sudden drop of the floor when I'm far from you. And two, such a picking at the earth's 
curved surface and all laid on it, that I'm to hold the space and from it cast the gaze you've trained in me onto the backsides of docking bays, break places, parking lots, and turnabouts. And above them, the sky, a bigger, more respectable, more competent friend. Maybe let's have an aesthetic theory, like two dogs, same caramel color off-leashed to chase and echo one another in the green patch by the metro stop, gold embossed, grass threaded streets. Can I be in that picture one day with you? If what etches into your eyes leaves a small canyon in its trough, is there the chattering speech? I don't think it's enough to say images, seeing the still Aleppo pine needles, a tarp billowing at the lower winds are a weather. How long could you look in the foreground at a wet child who isn't you? The two bits of peeling white light she tossed into us feel like a skein, a weight, water falling down your back in the bath, a salted silver edge negative pressing you to the steady light impulse neither of us will absorb, winking in it all the while by its known waves, the state's cargo planes keep from folding into our street. Having lost a few peoples running in superfluity, the sky behaves itself over bamboo that, here, that grows here wild or bedded with river stones hauled come to rest their smoothing ends, but not the infinitive daughter, gone to run away with water as one of her rhymes. Hands on the water you call scene setting, hands on the table. Water over the houses and a hill swimming, paint a picture of a boat. Put everyone's names in it, all yarn, Standing up tall as your favorite bamboo in the yard. Tell me again, its leaves fold back, historically, materially green, over its pale shoots, opening and dividing a day into rooms collected. In the picture encyclopedia, any guest could look up, use decades represented in montaged trunk and bikini cuts all the soft blind fingers at the walls of a day. Just a day folds back to look on you, like an anchor serving its subjects, floating out on a water I couldn't feel soaking into this valley of gravel and clay 5,000 feet thick under alluvial fans of boulder debris. Across desert floors, young vulcan volcanism made the real light red that pulls the eye into the core of mountain silhouettes. Quote, we see shadows of people, said the drone pilots, and we kill those shadows. Then to each other, that's a kid there to the left. That's what they were calling the adolescent earlier. Yeah, adolescents don't move like that. Walking into a room with sadness made crystal touches me on the thigh in a brotherly way. I already know quickening flashes of teeth as people affirming a homeland are about to come. But at any age, you could command your architect what color glass for the office park. Low clouds reflected advance into their next sky, next weather. Let's say our right to pleasure is a withholding. As a president lies in state, do you wake in state as a medium screaming? I carry no one in my eyes, not even a lane. I don't know to where you can stretch your finitude a little. 
I can be your thing. You scream you want in your night terror to bite my mouth. Right side up with care, Henry Box Brown's Mirror of Slavery panorama show interrupted whose idea of escape? The magisterial fields of the horse run, dotting the rolling hills with char, with effects, with bodies used up for a whiteness, from which Marina Abramovich's heroics would further empty out with avoiding majesty, I don't trust. Henry's fields give the lie. To a tribe somewhere saying fear because it feeds the gull by night wheels round its technology for falling. Such a handling stuns the thing, isn't gentle to its otherness. Be thou gentle to your animal. Our finest sculptors charged with shaping a woman. Guan Xiyin and her deified name means observing the sounds of the world. Glaze her hand and leave it loose to turn or withhold until she grants a petition and call her a figure for compassion. The sun comes up through the planted trees, a thing waste not want. What will you, in your time, do with a white enough woman's form? Will its light burn a word in the room so un-American in its humors and fearless hugging near death that we'll try to say it's not a real word either. So our anger might remain civilian and eventually yours. Trying to outpace likenesses, who sells the shadow? To dance only among spirit rappers in bodies where quote, women, Negroes, natives, it was said, were acted out for Reverend Madison they were, quote, vehicles of impurity. My children, too, have learned a barbarous tongue, though it's not so sure they will rise to high command, wrote Dufu. Or Bernadette Mayer, speaking on New England. A boy tried to hang a dog in a playground, she said. You tried several spaces today, under a desk, a nook, bent to your body brought round. What about all the rooms the sky makes a faint blue expanse? A long far line of electric poles, a mountain I can see dog yelps sound almost digital, maybe from inside a car parked at the Dollar General. I guess anyone dreaming a state could visit and detonate insourcing a kind of defense. But the sky behaves itself with just enough war over us. As a family feast photographed frames time in our house. You made your first marks today on this page. To my empowered friends, I love your story. like the shapes we made and the things we said were demanding of us. Now you ask me why the sky is a tank full of lemonade out back, all wet tonight and bugs call up a swamp in this desert in my story. My dad wrote all the wrong names for her on a brick that could lift. Through my mother's window came the words arrayed in glass, dusting San Martincito on her dresser, cast in plastic with spaces in his robes, a home for the hen, the dog made mild in the skirts of the mongrel saint. Still lining a thin, easy silence around me come the scenes all down our street in someone's car music. Each word lifted into its own space 
thumps and the moon's heavy sleep breath, there are extensions we can read what we said. It's such a simple print shop. Some mothers might tell us what came to be more known. A pear tree in the commons and really the words left idle beside. If they could tell us about the forms, if these came to lift them, if we could ask, sin miedo y sin piedad. Wouldn't they never say there was a time? What hovers turns behind, maybe two feet up from our scapula, a moon's heavy heel in the water, an Aleppo daughter in my line ordered from a bride book, bringing the wrong language to the Andes, her new stepkids taking her first stillborn by the heel, far from her Arabic, taunting. I've seen their pictures. They were beautiful young people. And in those minutes that they feel in their mouths, there are spaces for the refusals. But we've heard migrants carried cultures in their dough. Little strains of living stretched back to outleap our generations with their own. Collapsing days into what they've written for us. Socializing the mother function. A daughter in your mother's line grew to offer her Englishless milk to strange babies in a Newark tenement. And once in the parking lot at a park called Enchanted Rock, we saw a daughter searching the asphalt and her father screaming, if you lost it, I will destroy you. Not unhinged, but large, stretching the wet outlines of his organs to chamber the particular grain of his voice's promise. And here goes my voice, trying to fit opposite promises in relation. For you, would there be no address? If I try to tell it back to you, what voice runs over gravel in the sentence? Taking shapes on the gravel in the sentence. A dead girl given to the likeness of a depilated face made white enough, or having hired hands to shape in their skill, or having bred some not overwhelmingly disposable features, having been raised in friends' congregations, in unaffected elegance, taking a pledge of resistance, to kneel with international solidarity into the stamp of that human shield, before someone else's house, besieged, bearing shining hospitality, we told you to give your money to the poor, kneeling before a partner state's bulldozer, working a little harder into contested ground, happens to flay the white from Rachel's body. How do I mark the strata of attended things descended past where I let myself be, buoyant, wanting nothing more just than to be traded. It's not the dust that hurt, already layered on what Trojan baby girl would bear me out of the future pre-Rome, but wanting a fraying of the lines written by a claim to life as a condition so we could play. Only means in my hands those lines extend. It's no better wanting it in a doting way. Just smile already, I know, into the sunny, grainy pear rising onto my teeth. It's like some people you see by the heel, purpling held into the screen in my pocket, a position, I would say. If sound was finding forms, stand in for us. I hold the baby thing, 
pretend I didn't know you ever and say the wrong far words all around, gild the air, heel in hand. In the light going through its orange and pink turning rhinestones in the story. Sustains delay to let the familiar back at once. For you, which pieces won't we shed? Peopleless. Who says what's kin? Who doubts cicada songs extend each silver green bamboo into a whole firm canopy? Who doubts the prophet groaned in the spirit self same, sure shot glory raising Lazarus out of the mountain box into something real? If I am to believe my emergency, giving the type away to typos, Henry emerged on loop. Are you being seen in some old eyes? With cares how some headaches need to start embracing the dumb will speak, the lame will walk in such promises, in so much insistence. There was the Cesar Vallejo, all woke drunk, up in some white people's republic, rousing volunteers into freedom. Bring me my horse, my love, my gold green pair, our general strike, my gun. Whenever you read this, what diminishment will you know? Making words seem only signals of their own restraint. I guess yelling at you to survive doesn't change the object you are. Everywhere, stealing my shit, figuring and giving out rights of way through me. Like if parenting is a thing, are you childing those of us who gave you a face? And if Cesar was only right, where bodies have to coalesce in great numbers before the state responds with its infrasound rays that don't cut off the ear, but shake the cochlear fluid, bringing faces down onto paving stones, or with rays that would excite water and fat. So the burning skin symptom can insistently affect one area or shift the burning skin symptom can come and go rarely, frequently, or persist. Then is that why some of us like to take pictures of so many serial things warehoused or on docks, waiting? Or we like to name the bougainvillea flowers, to linger in a timeless way we thought to crown you with possibility. And there isn't a day I don't hear a little circle of war storied out so I can eat it. On an oval orbit, you say. So even if I'm not directly before you, alone isn't a thing. And someone who does not love you cannot name you right. Araceli Skirme. Like when my mother died, women she worked with, tending the old, brought girls to chant out of the chapel's bright plain walls, a novena, singing nine days into one niche. On a string, their voice ran out of their voice and their voice caught up. With words, they made a handling. It's right to worry about losing oneself to a stylized rank, Nazis. But I don't think that's it. If we're ready to fold unalone into a voice, the dead can leave, love having been a casual service. Casually volute, mold and casting to one another in your childing way. Don't imitate my slogans in some fidelity to our line. I won't rise forever. Maybe I'll be near you 
a while thinking, I need your breath to work for me. Where vague life means even your blur claimed into a comment. What Henry would discontinue at each object, a self-same region of objects renders Israel onto Israel, California onto us, impelled toward us as impediment and back on the edge surface of our contact turns out a type of porcelain for those casual curates, another type of porcelain for court form. It's because there are consequences. Lisa Robertson. And if words alone are just tracers in the negative, I'll keep writing you to move it welcomed by the outline where you could drop the word. You know, you say, that's not even the most brittle shape above us. Leaves are turning their gray sunless sides every which way. So to wipe gone the track of your next minute your little voice says, the reservoir goes on forever. And it does in a funny wave. Shining cityscapes of gravel poised at our heads looped a kind delay of form. Any owned will chafed down to red silt and feeling laid out on this dusty plain opening under a mirroring sky. It's available dead look down to each grain of sand, those sharpest edges, their binding single cells in facets in such futures to be simple and done. Sparklers branch into three or four twigs at their ends every time. And in a turning over of paper or in lacquered thinnest layers of my habits. You say you hear gold leaf, a glaze drying on the hand and honey in the mix. Each the other's animals we keep talking to move the words is a sounding. So if the dead and the shipped get to us, we could be not a people, but a floor. Didn't you go there already? So hard of conditions that don't come any which way in time for you having been gone. So given to, so articulated in the disarrayed come on of you, observing the sounds of the world, unboxed, unchaste, if it's the wrong verb to stay somewhere in the forward line of your reactions, do you trust? A sensuality less fanciful? Ungenetic, plated at the service of our obstruction. Doesn't it run back to sending you this far into this wanting to be about freedom? Somebody means the mistakes. Hearing two or three birds in the call of one arcing out to visit everywhere back onto its name. Waltz us to an attitude held in their soft bird eyes, softest lids, like an end in an image of arches seeming to open as he passed. Henry emerged from the box singing a hymn of thanksgiving. Every night out of hymn of thanksgiving, having gone again in the typo, in the thing in which to hide, is how we'll keep leaving it for the real street. I want to say is the word and its voice run ahead to where we can do what we want, 
but not bound even to that. The nation wanes. I'm not afraid you'll turn back. Thank you.